through. So uh, I'm responsible for making the PowerPoint here. And uh, just so you know, I'm going to give a disclaimer right up front here. When I made this thing, for some strange reason, I failed to include the fourth and final verse of How Great Thou Art when I made the PowerPoint along with the last refrain. Uh, and so you should know, perhaps you know it by heart, uh, but it's on page 483 of the Grace Psalter hymnal, When Christ Shall Come, with shout of acclamation. Uh, that is not on the PowerPoint. My apologies for that. Uh, I've been gone for a week, and I'm scrambling uh, to catch up, but uh, you should know that. Number 483 in the back of a Grace Psalter hymnal. But let us sing together how great thou art as the family enters the sanctuary.
help is in the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. We are gathered here today to praise God, to witness to our faith, and to give thanks for the life of Artie Bunema. We're here to grieve her death. We're here to give thanks for her life. We're here to rejoice in her eternal life. And we're here to hope. That is to say, we're here to confidently expect that we will see her again through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. We come together in grief, acknowledging our loss. May God grant us grace that in pain we may find comfort, in sorrow, hope, and in death, resurrection. Dying, Christ destroyed our death, and rising, Christ restores our life. Let us pray. O oh God, before whom generations rise and pass away, we praise you for all your servants who, having lived this life in faith, now live eternally with you. Today we especially thank you for your servant, Artie. We praise you for the gift of her life, for all in her that was good and kind and faithful. We thank you for the grace you gave her that kindled in her a love for you and enabled her to serve you faithfully. We thank you that for her, death is past and pain has ended, and that she has now entered the joy you have prepared for her through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Invite Wayne Deckers at this time saying, great is thy faithfulness. and up. 
that endureth thy own dear presence to cheer and to guide strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow blessing the mind with ten thousand And all I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. grandchildren will now give remembrances of her. Uh, one is able to be here, Jason Sweats. The other, Terry Elgersma, is not able to be here, and so she, hers will be given via a, a video recording. So I invite Jason Sweats at this time to share remembrances of Grandma Artie. You can use the, the red covered microphone, Jason. Our parents give us life. Our grandparents give us a sense of who we are and where we came from. This week, as we said goodbye to Grandma Artie, it hit me how incredibly lucky I've been to have my lovely grandmother with me over the past 26 years of my life. Not only with me, but she's always been a close part in my life. It's rare for a grandparent-grandchild relationship to be so essential and so long lasting. But then again, Grandma Artie was that exceptional kind of person every single day of her life. Until the last couple years, my gran grandmother had more energy and interest than anyone I've ever known. We always joked and called her the little pink energizer bunny. <laughs> as a kid, I spent nearly every morning and afternoon with Grandma as she brought me to school and picked me up. I was even lucky enough to see my grandma in the lunch line because she volunteered as a dishwasher. Most kids my age would be embarrassed, but I thought it was the coolest thing in the world. I always knew I was, I always knew I was going to get a hug and a kiss when I brought my tray away. The memories are endless with my sweet grandmother, but a few that I've been replaying in my mind are the numerous card and domino games at the dining room table with her and Homer. There was never a dull moment with Graham. If we weren't inside playing a game, we were outside being active. Whether it was hopscotch in the garage, croquet around the yard, or a trip to Lamar's for ice cream and mini golf, there was never an option to sit inside and watch TV. And for that, I'm extremely thankful. The kind of love Graham felt for us was love with out condition. She may not have approved of everything we did, may not have liked some of the decisions we made, but she didn't lecture, she didn't judge, she just kept loving us, letting us know that she was there if we ever needed her. We could always count on her to listen, to comfort, and to help. She lived a simple life. It didn't take much to make her happy. A phone call, a card, a visit, or a kiss before saying goodbye or goodnight. We were the most important people in the world to her. She lived to make our lives better and was proud of us. To think that someone like her felt that way about us should make us all feel more than just a little good. We can never forget that there is a part of her in each of us, 
something that she gave to us and asked for nothing in return. I'm going to borrow my cousin Mark's words here, because he said it perfectly. Grandma Artie was simply amazing. She joyfully served. She lived the I am second lifestyle. I hope I can carry out a little of her legacy and serve others with the attitude she did. I also want to challenge everyone that is here today and knew her to do the same. Grandma, I so look forward to seeing you in heaven someday. I know you're up there singing and spinning circles while playing that accordion. We love you and are so thankful you are not pain free. Thank you, Jason.
she would say, oh, they're crossing the bridge, and they could have fallen through because of a gap, but they had a guardian angel watching over them. She told it a lot better than I can, and that's okay. I remember loving that story and having to tell us it. You know, when I think about it now, maybe it wasn't the story that we loved so much. It was her. We just loved her so much. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, Terry, at a distance as well for your beautiful remembrances of your grandmother. There'll be a recorded song played now chosen by the family uh, one day. It's a contemporary Christian song by Matt Redman, but you'll certainly recognize the chorus, the refrain, when we all get to heaven. Played at this time, I believe the lyrics will also be on the screen along with the song.
beautiful song about a beautiful Savior and beautiful things in store for those who belong to him. Would you pray with me? God, to whom should we go? You and you alone have the words of eternal life. Speak to us now by your word for our good and for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Instead of beginning with scripture like I normally do when I give a sermon, a message, I'd like to begin with a statement from Artie's obituary and then connect that statement about Artie to a few statements from scripture in Galatians chapter 5 that I think captured the foundation for this statement about Artie and her obituary. So if you want to you want to grab in advance of that, if you want to grab a pew Bible and turn to Galatians chapter 5, you're invited and welcome to do so. If not, you're welcome just to listen as well. In Artie's obituary, we read, and it caught my attention when I read it, that she will be remembered for her faith in Christ Jesus, love of family, hospitality, and hard work. That's a short, sweet, but I think beautiful and accurate description and summary of Artie's life and Artie's priorities. Faith in Christ Jesus, love of family, hospitality, hard work. We've already heard these things referenced by Jason, by Terry. Faith in Christ Jesus was the foundation of Artie's life. She knew, she knew that her only comfort in life and in death was that she was not her own, but that she belonged, body and soul, in life and in death, to her faithful Savior, Jesus Christ. She knew that Jesus had fully paid for all her sins with his precious blood and that he had set her free from the tyranny of the devil. She knew that Jesus watched over her in such a way that not even a hair could fall from her head without the will of her Father in heaven and that all things in her life worked together for her salvation. She knew that because she belonged to Christ, he by his Holy Spirit assured her of eternal life and made her wholeheartedly willing and ready to live for him. She knew. She knew. And therefore we could know. You see, faith in Christ Jesus was the foundation and number one priority in Artie's life. And that's why we saw in her life her love for family, her hospitality, and her hard work. It's because her faith in Christ Jesus was the foundation and number one priority of her life. As far as the other three priorities, love of family, hospitality, and hard work, Beautiful summary, by the way, family members who, who wrote that, captured that. As for those other three priorities, love of family, hospitality, and hard work, I, I'm going to take the liberty to suggest that those priorities apply not only to Artie's family, her relatives, but indeed also to her church family. You see, Artie loved both of her families. You, her relatives, and her church family, her brothers and sisters in Christ, here, where she spent 68 years of her life, 68 out of 88, right here. She provided hospitality to both of her families, to her relatives, to you, and to her church family. She worked hard for both of her families for you, her relatives, and for her church family. Galatians 5, verse 6, the second half of that verse, 
It says the only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love. Artie's life was a life of faith expressing itself through love. Love for both of her families. A little later in the chapter, Galatians 5, verse 13, the end of that verse says, Serve one another in love. Artie's life was a life of serving both of her families in love through hospitality and hard work. And towards the end of Galatians 5, we read these, I trust, familiar words to you. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Was not Artie's life a life that displayed and demonstrated for all who knew her this fruit of the Spirit to both of her families? Indeed, it, it, it did, and it was. That's why we all loved her so much. Because by God's grace, she showed us all what God's love looks like. By God's love to her and in her, she showed us what faith expressing itself in love looks like. By God's love and grace to her and in her, she showed us what serving one another in love looks like. By God's love and grace to her and in her, she showed us what the fruit of the Spirit looks like. There are many stories that could be told about Artie. Some of them already told here today would encourage you to continue to tell those stories. Most of you know many more of these stories than what I do, and it was fun to hear some of those, Jason and Terry. I'd like to capture just one story that I'm aware of, and I don't know all the details, and I may not get it all right, but just one story that I think captures much of what I've already said about Artie because of God's grace and love in her and through her and to her and her faith in Christ Jesus, which produced love for family, relatives, and church hospitality and hard work. One story that I'm aware of that I think captures this pretty well in a pretty neat way for our little church family here that will resonate, I think, with, your, with you relatives of Artie as well. 1953, John and Artie, I guess, had been married three years or so. I know they were married in 1950. In 1953, a 16-year-old young man, today we'd probably call him a boy, a 16-year-old young man by the name of Howard Zutenhorst came from Alton here to Lebanon to work for John and Artie Haberhals as a hired hand. Howard not only worked for John and Artie, he lived with them as they provided him with room and board. And I imagine in large part because of Artie, I, and I didn't know John, but I'm sure he factored in that as well. Howard was welcomed into their family. And through them, he was also welcomed into the Lebanon Christian Reformed Church family. Eventually, John and Artie, and I imagine others from the Lebanon Church family helped Howard to be able to farm on his own. <coughs> Howard and his wife, Fran, spent the rest of their lives in the Lebanon Church family. They raised their five children in the Lebanon church family. Two of those five, Daryl and Dan, are still part of the Lebanon church family, and each of them have sons, Jesse and Brendan Zutenhorst, Howard's grandsons, that will be making public profession of faith right here in the Lebanon church family in a few weeks on Sunday morning, August 5. I'm guessing that Artie's faith in Christ Jesus, love of family, Hospitality and hard work had at least a little something to do with Howard Zutenhorst and his family becoming a part of the Lebanon church family. Indeed, she will be remembered for her faith in Christ Jesus, her love of family, her hospitality, and her hard work. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Artie believed in Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. 
And it's our custom usually most every Sunday night here at, uh, at Lebanon Christian Reformed Church to confess the Christian faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. With the church of all times and all places, our Trinitarian faith and a Trinitarian God according to the word of God and scripture. I invite you at this time, and you remain seated, that's fine, uh, to join with me in the faith that already confessed many times over in the faith that she lived as together we confess what we believe in the Apostles' Creed. Christian, what do you believe? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Into your hands, O oh, merciful Savior, we commend your servant Artie. We thank you that because she was a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming, you have received her into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let us stand together and sing of our victory in Jesus. The Apostle Paul at the end of this great chapter on the resurrection in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 concludes that chapter by saying, Thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us sing together of that victory. Victory in Jesus, which I understand was a favorite of Artie's that she loved to play on the piano. So Minerva's going to play it on the piano, and uh, I'll ask the family, they're going to sing along. When we get to the last refrain, uh, we're going to have the family depart at that time. Everyone else stay put until, uh, until they have done so. Let us sing together.